two, one. Hi everybody, Mr. Higgins here, and we are going to into the next project, animating your art with Scratch. We've spent the last few projects making a lot of really amazing art artifacts, PNGs, Photoshops, digital art, and in our last project, mandalas, these kind of geometrical and symmetrical shapes. And in this project, we are going to leave Photopea behind us and start into a little bit of coding and animation. We're gonna take all the things we've made before and start to make them move and capture that movement. Really, when you start to get into coding and get into animation, it'll make you realize all the things you could have done. And I think that's super exciting and I encourage you to go back and maybe make some more layers and make some more art and bring it back into this. This video is going to be in four different parts. The first and biggest part of this video is going to be a scratch coding animation tutorial where we're going to bring in our some of the artwork that we've made, especially in the last project, and we are going to animate that. Then for part two, we are going to take that first project project we made and we're going to save it three different times and then we're going to start to experiment with those three different versions. We're going to change which piece of artwork we're using and then in parts three and four we're going to add special effects and those special effects we're going to experiment. They're going to be a little different in each of our three versions and then you're going to do background design where you can bring in PNGs, you can bring in background images, you can make your own and then at the end of this project we are going to have three projects. We've experimented with it and then going into the next project, we are going to turn those three projects we animate today into GIFs so we can share them with the people we care about and they can see what we we're up to. Moving on to part one, we are going to go to Scratch. All right, welcome to part one where we are going to do our Scratch animation tutorial. If you've never used Scratch before, I want you to press join Scratch. You're going to be prompted to make a username and password. It can be whatever you want. If you've got a gamer tag or a channel name on YouTube, you can use that. Or if you just want to use like your just something random, that's totally fine too. One important thing though is don't use your real name because your account will be banned. I've had students who did a lot of awesome work and then their account was banned because they used their real name or they used a cuss word. No cussing, no real names. Cool? Okay, make your username. Once you've made your username, your homepage should look something like this, where you've got your account on the right-hand side and you've got create on the left-hand side. One of the coolest things about Scratcher, there is something around, there's somewhere around 45 million users. So, so, so many people using this thing. Uh, and a lot of them are always sharing their work. There's a really big social aspect to Scratch. So it's really cool to just maybe go on to explore and search around and kind of see what some other people are doing. There's also some people to follow who are like some of the best Scratch coders in the world. It's really interesting and fun to play what they make and to look at what they're making. One of the really nice things about Scratch is that just like Google Slides or Sketch.io, it will automatically save your work. Just make sure you're logged in so it can save. So to start things off, what we want to do is press the create button. I'm going to jump ahead to show you what you should have when you finish part one. So we don't have special effects. We don't have background. This is just the basic animation. And it's going to look something like this. And this is our code. And these are all our sprites. So these are all different versions of my art that I made. Maybe screenshot or just pause the screen here so you can see all the blocks we're going to be using. And I'm going to walk us through making it from scratch right now. Okay, so walking us through this animation, the first thing we're going to do is click on events that's going to be yellow and we're going to be bring in the when flag is clicked that flag is go after we bring in when flag is clicked we're going to jump up to our motion block and we are going to bring in a go to and it's going to have our x and our y and we're going to click in those and we're going to have zero zero so go to x y zero zero then we're going to bring in a turn to the right block and we're going to change that to one. Just leave that off to the side. You don't need to leave it connected right now. Now what I'm going to do is go down to looks. Purple is going to be our looks. That's kind of all our visual code that we're going to be using. And we're going to bring set size and we're going to bring in set color. After we bring in our set color effect, we are going to scroll down a little more. You can use your middle mouse button to do that. And we are going to pick a go front to front layer and a go forward one layer. But I want us to change something. We're going to change go to front layer to go to back layer. Now we're gonna go down to the control group and we're gonna bring in a forever loop. Any code we put in there is just gonna run forever. We're just gonna create our perpetual animation. Then I'm gonna grab this, it's gonna wait one second and I'm gonna change that one second. A lot of students mess this up, so pay attention. I'm gonna do 0 0.01, one one hundredth of a second. This is a mistake a lot of students do is they do one second or 0.1 second, 0.01 second. And once we've got all this code, we are good to go. And what we're going to do is assemble our code. So I'm going to bring, I set my size to, set my color to, go back one layer, go forward one layer. I'm going to change that to zero. Then I'm going to put my forever block here. I'm going to turn one degree. 
and I'm going to wait one degree. Right now, I just got this cat chilling here. If I press play, the cat's going to slowly start to spiral around. And what I want to do is bring in our artwork that we've made. So you're going to click this sprite here, left click on the sprite, go up to costumes. And so there's these two cats here. But what I want to do is get rid of these cats. And we can do that once we've brought in our artwork. So I'm going to hover on, choose a costume, and I'm going to go up to Upload Costume. What I want to do is go to Project 6 to start, and we are going to click on some of the mandala artwork that we made. It should show up over here. And then I'm going to bring another one. And then I'm going to bring another one. And you can bring in all the artwork that you've made. Uh, you can also go back and maybe jump over to Project 5. And I'm going to grab my pyramid that I made. Maybe I'm going to go back to Projects 3 or 4. And uh, yeah, so that's good. So then I can click through and I can change any of these. And if I want to delete it, there's that little trash can there. So I'm going to delete the cat. So now it's all my original artwork. When we go back to our main page and we have our code, now when we press go, now it's going to animate our art. Once we have our artwork, single sprite animating, we are going to start to make some more advanced changes. Okay, so I'm going to click up here on the sprite name. And I'm going to change this because I know it's rotating to the right. I'm going to type right. And then I'm going to right click on that sprite and duplicate it. So now I got two sprites. Now this one, I'm going to make it go to the left. So I'm going to call it, change the name to left. And now what I'm going to do is instead of turn to the right one degree, I can do negative one degree, or I could go back up to the motion and I could just switch the blocks out to. Now what I want to do too is I'm going to change my size down to 80, a little smaller. I'm going to select go forward one layer. And then I can set my color. If I want to change my color, I can. I can do like 60, 50, negative 100, whatever you want. You click that button, you'll see what that color is. It's going to change it. So I can go full screen here. And you can see I've got my two layers. One's a little bit smaller. And it's rotating the opposite direction. So great start. Now we're going to do this six more times. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click my right layer. And I'm going to duplicate. And I get right two. I'm going to right click my left layer and duplicate. And I get left two. And I'm just going to keep doing this. I'm just going to go down the line until I got right four and left four. So I've got eight layers now. And what I'm going to do is I have to start to change my size. So it was 100, 80, I'll do 60, 40, 20, 10. So I'm going to start to cut it in half now since I can't go down by 20. Five. And for the last one, I'll just put two. Now what I'm going to do is I want to change my go forward one because we need to make sure that the layers are on top of each other. So I'm going to go forward zero. Left is go forward one. For right two, I want to go forward two layers. For left two, I want to go forward three layers. And then four, five, six, seven. And then when I'm ready, I'm going to go full screen. I'm going to press my go button. And now our artwork is animating. It looks great. We are now ready to move into part two where we are going to duplicate this. So I just want to show you what to do now. Your name of your project will be up here. It probably just says something random, maybe untitled one, two, or three. And we want to call that animation one. Then what we want to do after we have named it, we are going to click on file on the top left and we're going to click save as copy. That's going to change the name to my animation one copy. We're going to delete copy in one and we're going to change that to two. So it's made a second copy of your project. And then what we're going to do is we're going to click file, save as copy, and it's going to create a third version of the project. And we're going to delete two copy and click three. How you access your projects, how you would access animation one, two, and three is in your project folder on the top right. So we're gonna left click up here and you should be able to see you have three animations but they look exactly the same. Let's open animation two. And what we're gonna do is we are gonna start to change it. In part, parts three and four, we're gonna do some special effects and we're gonna change the background. And we're gonna create unique special effects and backgrounds for projects one, two, and three. So they all look different. What we're gonna do right now is we wanna jump into our costumes and we can start to change these costumes over. So if I click the sprite, uh, you know, you can turn them all to the same costume. I've changed the sprite costume over to a different sprite for animation two. Maybe you want to have multiple sprites together. You can mix and match as you want. The important thing is that animations one, two, and three all look different and have different sprites. When you have animations one, two, and three, and they all look completely different, then we are ready to move on to part three, which is special effects. 
Okay, special effects is gonna be pretty easy. What we are gonna do is create at least one, although you can do two or three or four, special effects loop. I'm going back to animation one to start this and then do two and three afterwards. What I'm gonna do is I am going to left click on my first layer, the biggest one that's set to 100%, get our wind flag is clicked, I'm going to go into control and I'm going to get a forever loop and then I'm gonna bring a repeat in. What I'm gonna do is repeat a special effect a certain amount of times. I'm gonna start with 50, and then I'm going to go over to my looks, and I'm gonna scroll down until I see change. I'm gonna bring that in, change color by 25, and then set color. What I wanna do is before my forever loop, I am going to set my special effect. It's super important, this is very important, that your set effect is the same as your change effect. So I'm going to try fisheye. I'm going to set fisheye to zero to start and then I'm going to repeat my fisheye and set this to fisheye. So they're the same, right? Since I'm repeating 50 times, I'm just going to do two. Now I'm going to right click the 50 loop and I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to put it in here and then I'm going to change my effect by negative two. Notice it's uh, bulging out here. I'm going to click start again. It's going to create a loop. So now it's fisheyeing up to a hundred and then coming back because it's 50 times two. If I wanted to uh, make this more dramatic, I could set it to 100 and 100. Or I could set it to 20 and, and change the fisheye by 10, and that would make it quicker. This is the basic effects loop, and you can experiment with these. Uh, I'm gonna right click and duplicate, they'll give me two. And now I'm gonna set this to ghost, which will do a fade. So I'm gonna change all these over to ghost. Now I'm gonna press play, and you'll notice it fades out, and then it will slowly fade back. Now, if I want to put these on a different sprite, it's super easy. I'm just going to left click it and drag it over and drop it on. Now, if I click over here, I've got that ghost effect, right? If I want both of them, I need to do it for each of them. So I'm going to put those on all the rights just for fun. Now, obviously, you can start to create some pretty crazy stuff. You need to experiment and my main advice here is before you put it on any other sprites, make sure you found multiple effect loops that you think look really good on your original big sprite. Don't move them over until you're really happy with the effects that you got. When you're really happy with the effects that you've got and you've done it for animation one, then you're gonna go over to animation two and three and experiment with those effect loops again. And we are ready to move on to part four, which is doing our background. So as we come to the end of this project and we're creating all our unique animations, one of the last things that you could do is add a background. So to use our background, what we need to go down to the bottom right here, and this is gonna be our background layer. You can upload a backdrop. That means upload any image that you have, or you can make your own. So I'm gonna click paint. I'm gonna click convert to bitmap, and then I'm gonna click in the paint bucket icon, and I'm gonna click in this fill. Or you could do a solid color if you want. But what I think looks a little more interesting than a solid color is using a gradient. If you click over on the shape, you can have it fade between two different colors. Click here, so for example. If I want to create a new one, I'm just going to click paint down here and it'll give me a new slide. I'm going to go over to the circle and I am going to pick two different colors. I really like the teal. For my second color, I'm going to go with the kind of pink or purple. And then it's a circle fill and I'm going to click right in the center and left click once. That's looking like a great background to me. Cool. If you want to make a custom image as your background, that's fine too. Uh, the main thing is that you're going to have three animations. They're going to have unique special effects. They're going to have unique sprites and they're going to have a unique background. When you finished all three, you are good to go. And I'm super excited to see what you make. Okay. Bye.